you wrote the email really well, but let me tell you what I really heard. Yeah, I was just like, okay, like you never wanted to do this. That's okay. Mm-hmm. So it was essentially ending around the time I couldn't afford it. And I was just like, okay. And I never had like the termination session with my previous therapist. It was just like, mm-hmm. I couldn't afford it. Y'all aren't doing it anyways. Mm-hmm. But then I found her. Okay. So now okay. we're back. And okay. I was like, hey, girl, I missed you. Okay. <laughs> I missed, I you, missed so you. much. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, no. I like, I found mm-hmm. her just to make sure to see if she was actually doing private practice or if she had gone to another agency. Mm-hmm. And I was just looking her up and I was just like, I'm she still doing private e-. practice? Yeah, she opened up her own. I was just okay. like, I'm sending that email one day mm-hmm. and I sent it. And then I didn't hear anything back. You mind if I ask what that email said? Was it a hey, girl? Or was it a, was like, or was it a hey? Hey. Um, it wasn't. It wasn't a hey. The phone call when I did answer, it was a yeah. hey. Tears. Mental Health Monday. 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 Why Pilates? I need to move my body. I okay. had a personal trainer two uh-huh. years ago. Don't know how I was affording that. That was another thing that I, I realized was getting real tight. <laughs> so I was getting real tight. It, ooh. <laughs> I think uh, that was the thing I, I, I couldn't afford it anymore. It was yeah. like $500 a month. Oh. I don't know how I was affording it. And it how just many got times were you, were you twice training? Twice a week. Twice a week and sometimes That's actually Sunday. a really good deal for 500 a month. And they were right down the street from that, me. Like, that was a really I good get deal you were getting. I in my car drive two minutes and they were yeah. right Yeah, did that include the gym membership? No, this was at their house. <sighs> what kind of house did they have? Did they have like nice equipment and stuff? Yeah, or just, yeah, yeah. They okay. turned their garage into like a studio. Okay, so, like, okay. How were the results? Oh, you got your money's worth. That's, I got that's my a money's win. Worth. Yeah, I yeah, got my yeah. money's worth. Would you ever go back to them if things weren't as tight as it is right oh, yeah. now? Mm-hmm. Okay, because you, you could be one of those people that you're like, I've built up this whole Pilates um persona of myself that i don't need to go back pilates got me pilates on those machines keeping your core i've seen a lot of nfl players fold doing that stuff right it's hard because it's your body weight but it's also about controlling and knowing how to move your muscles and i wish i would have done pilates of breathing too yes i I do a lot of my my breathing is better now Mm -hmm. because i couldn't I couldn't get it down packed when I was doing personal training. And mm-hmm. I wish I would have switched mm-hmm. and done Pilates first because mm-hmm. they would be like, oh, this muscle. I'm like, what muscle are you talking mm-hmm. about? Like, I don't have that defined muscle. Now I do. Mm-hmm. And I'm mm-hmm. just like, or I have it, like awareness of it. So I feel like I would have done better in personal training hey. if I started with Pilates. Hey, just give yourself credit. <laughs> You're talking about some phenomenal, some phenomenal progress you that you've made. Goes? And I was like, yo, you're snowballing in the wrong direction. I was like, yo, reel really it back, reel really it back. You, you got this. It's That's okay. It's okay. I'm just I'm someone say <laughs> good. Yo. No, come back. <laughs> Titanic. Come back. <laughs> All right, it's your boy Juice Jones from Get Home Safe here with another episode of Mental Health Monday. Here with my friend, social worker, popular, great at her job, showing up to hospital with folks, getting them out the mud. Tell the folks about what you do. Do I say my name? No, I said don't say your name. Oh, don't yeah, say protecting my name. you, man. Keeping um, the anim- yeah. anonymity. Is that what it is? Anonymity. I am me. Uh-huh. I am a therapist. Okay. Okay. I show up for my clients. And okay. I'm not a superhero. Okay. Okay, what does it mean to show up for your clients? Is there like a show up for your client Bible that you have to like follow? No, just active listening. Like, mm-hmm. if you say something, like, I heard you say it. Yeah. Now, what did you mean by that? Mm, what did you mean by that? No. Yeah. <laughs> what? Do people need therapists? Some, not all. Okay. No. How so? I don't want to say if you have a diagnosis, you need mm-hmm. a therapist. Mm-hmm. But if you're struggling to manage because of the diagnosis, you know, a little razzle dazzle, a little therapist here, mm-hmm. therapy there, mm-hmm. couldn't it couldn't hurt. One of my folks who I have not done work with mm-hmm. told me 
what's good about having a therapist is sometimes you don't know how to handle failure and sometimes you don't know how to handle success and you need someone to walk you through the good parts if you're not used to receiving good yeah have you ever met that in any of your clients Mm -hmm. sometimes i show up so differently for everybody sometimes i'm just a cheerleader Mm -hmm. sometimes i am there just to acknowledge how far you've come and oh remember when you were doing it this way and now you're doing it that way look at the difference of the outcomes like sometimes i'm just there to listen and to be like hey hey wait stop Mm -hmm. do you hear yourself do you hear how you're talking different you're thinking different you're doing different Mm -hmm. why do you think that is and sometimes it'll be like, oh, it's because of you. No, it's all you. You are doing all of the work. I'm just here. Where does that come from? Your ability to know when to step in and say, hey, actually, all that hard work belongs to you. You pay me to be here. Don't get me <laughs> wrong. And I'm going to be here for the next <laughs> session. But, you know, it's your turn to give yourself credit. Because therapy is all about the work that you the person does Mm -hmm. so reminding you reminding the person like this is all your work so you have responsibility in how your life plays out to the best of your ability you can control what you can and you can't control what you can't would you say there's something therapeutic about being able to help people outside of yourself yeah okay Mm -hmm. absolutely because Mm, that could probably be like a whole nother conversation of just like next time on Dragon Ball Z <laughs> I'm just saying I'm just saying yeah just you know everyone has a different reason of why they like choose social work or choose to do therapy mm-hmm. and counseling and sometimes it's because of their own trauma or what they've gone through in life that they're like you know what I'm going to be there because maybe I didn't have somebody there when I needed it and I know what that felt like What do you think the thought process is of someone who would choose social work over being a therapist and vice versa? Mm. When I was, that that seems so wild to say, when I was in school. You were? Yeah. You did a good job. When? And now you're here. Yeah, when I first applied to college. You're going to take this compliment. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. See? (laughs) Thank you, thank you. (laughs) When I first applied for school, I said I wanted to do early childhood. And then when I switched, a lot of schools didn't have social work at the time. Like Really? Yeah, like two out of the three schools I applied to Uh didn't have social work or... They had sociology, but that Mm -hmm. wasn't what I wanted. Sociology isn't social work. I went to school for sociology. Oh, okay. (laughs) Yeah, so it isn't, there wasn't social work. And then um, I really didn't want to do psychology either. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, oh, the middle ground. So then there was social work. Mm -hmm. And then for my master's, I also did social work because just the diversity. But some people might do psychology and then go on to do their master's in um, counseling. Okay. So I think it was just the path that I saw as far as schooling. So we could all end up in the same spot. No, I get that, but but. you guys don't. Mm -hmm. And I think it's very important to acknowledge that your job is built on an ecosystem where it needs social workers and social workers need therapists. Mm -hmm. Because social workers with the work that they do they don't really have the capacity to have those conversations and have spaces where silence exists to just talk yeah. to the client. Because the goal is, are they going to be able to eat food? Mm-hmm. The kids at school? Yeah. You doing well? Do I need to do a check-in? You ain't been answering your text messages or phone yeah, calls. Yeah, like, I, I never saw myself doing, like, uh-huh. case management. I'm just like, oh, no. And I, I heard case management could get real disrespectful. Mm-hmm. Like, I real mean, disrespectful. Even as a therapist sometimes. I've been cut out. And I'm just like, okay. I guess that's the end of this session. What's the worst cuss out story you've ever had? Um. Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah, we're going there. Yeah. I don't think it was, like, mm-hmm. a true cuss out, but it was, it was like. Personal. It was like, get the fuck out of my house. And I was just mm-hmm. like, okay. And it was the guardian. Was this in person? Yeah. Oh. 
Yeah, and I was just like, okay. Because imagine someone tell you get got your house and you're just like, because she didn't want to screen. listen. She wanted to yell, and mm-hmm. I was like, we we're not gonna have a productive conversation mm-hmm. if you're yelling. You're not gonna tell me what I can and can't do in my house. Okay, you can get the fuck out. I was just like, in my head, I'm like, this is the last time I'm gonna see these kids. So I gave him a hug and everything, and I was just like, "You don't know my mind well when you said that." What? Fuck these kids. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Cause I realized it wasn't. Mm-hmm. The kids have their own concerns and problems and issues. Yes. And you but can I see realized it. it was just trickling down. Oh. And Guardian didn't want to take responsibility. Mm-hmm. And so I was just like, "Oh, this probably won't be the last time I see these kids." I gave them a hug. I shut their hand, and I just left. Do any and of those I could cases? ride in the car. Ooh. Yeah, so I was just like, <laughs> and then she called me. I think Monday or Tuesday. I was just like, "So are you seeing them this week, ma'am? You kicked me out of your house. Oh, you know, I didn't mean it. You just weren't listening to me. You weren't listening to anybody. How am I supposed to have a productive conversation with you?" She said, "You just weren't listening to me," or you said, "You just weren't listening to me." She said that to me. I was, I, oh, yeah. <laughs> I could feel the flashback. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you set goals for the things that you're doing right now? Or how did you go about the process of being, uh, this is where you fill in the blank for me? Clarify. Professionally. It's funny you ask. Okay. Okay. I like a laugh. I don't, maybe not funny. Ironic. So uh-huh. from like little kid. Mm-hmm to my senior year of high school. I had already applied for schools. I wanted to be a teacher, early childhood. Okay. Okay. And then my senior year, I did an intro to psych and social class, and we had a homework assignment. It was like, oh, do a help wanted ad for a helping profession. Mm-hmm. And I found social work. And I was okay. like, oh, I want to do this. Okay, social work. Yes. You just, you, you looked at it and you said, social plus work, that's me. I just typed in like helping professions. Social work was the one that popped up. So I did my research on it. Mm-hmm. And I made the help wanted ad. And it was just like, I had to so figure out. So you made out. your own ad? Like yeah. a real ad? Basically, I did a vision board in high school and I didn't uh-huh. realize it. But it was a vision board that was also put onto the internet because you made a help wanting ad. No, it was a homework assignment. Okay, so, so it was just Yeah, internal. like construction paper. Okay. I did the, oh, this is the title of the profession, mm-hmm. the salary, qualification, schooling. And I did that. Okay. And I found it after I graduated grad school. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh, shit, that's me. So, oh, so you did that and then it was like a full circle moment. Yes. So how long ago, what grade were you when you did that? 12th grade. I had already applied for schools. I already got accepted. Is grad school two years or four? Two. The program I did was two. Uh-huh. Um, it so, could have been one. So, so six years later? Six years later. Damn. I was like, oh, shit, that's me. Mm-hmm. You had a mini me moment? Like, damn, we like, were wow, already here. I really, like, spoke this into existence. So you made that vision board. That was a school assignment. Mm-hmm. It was buried somewhere. Yes. And you didn't realize you were already on the steps to becoming who you are now. Yes. Okay. That's fascinating. I, yes. I, I, hope, just, you, I hope you give yourself credit for that. I, I thought about it recently, uh, and I was just like, oh, maybe I need to do something else like that. Like, mm-hmm. It was basically a vision board, and I didn't realize it until I thought about it. I was just like, oh, I really did that. Mm -hmm. I'm really here. And I was just like, wow. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Is that intimidating? Becoming what you were interested in? Not intimidating. It's like satisfying. Like, oh, I did it. Now what else can I do? Mm, So you had your Jamie Foxx moment. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Would you say you handled it the same as him or no? I feel oh, like I'm going to look no. up this movie and try and find that clip of his like reaction. <laughs> so folks see his reaction compared to yours. Um, I don't know. I think. I think so. Okay. Not too sure. Okay. I was just kind of like, oh, I did it. Mm-hmm. What's next? Mm-hmm. How many times do I ask oh, myself? That? Yeah, I was gonna say, uh, what's next? <laughs> <laughs> every day, I mean, because every day working with different people, you don't know what the day is gonna be. You don't so, know who might call you in a crisis. Or... How are the people that you work with categorized? If you had like three categories, or is it more than three categories a person? Mm, I think. 
Hmm. If I had to categorize. Mostly women. Okay. Okay. Why women? Um, more susceptible, I think. Not more susceptible. What is the word? Give me a couple examples of mm -hmm. what the word means. Yeah. So I can see if I can help. Uh-huh. So they are more, what's a good replacement word? More open. Okay, yeah, open. Yeah, more okay. open okay. to receiving help help or assistance or okay. support. Okay. Man, there's always pushback. Yeah, but I've had male clients. Mm -hmm. A lot of them were younger, like teenagers and slow, like entering adulthood. Okay. So they started as teens. So when 18, 19, 20, 21 came, mm -hmm. they were like, no, I need a therapist because they already like had an introduction to it when they were younger. Do you and think... then it's like older men, like mm -hmm. 50, 60. Oh, so you have extremes. Yes. Yeah, so my, my youngest client to date is I think five. My mm. oldest, unfortunately, just had to discharge him because now he has Medicare. So mm -hmm. that hits at 65. So Ooh, that's unfortunate. Yeah. Do you think or would you say our current environment that is so pro therapy and pro get help has been helpful with the work that you're doing right now when it comes to the clients that you're seeing? Yes. Absolutely. Because now it's like, oh, it's easier. There's more accessibility. Mm -hmm. But then there is also a barrier for some people where um, maybe agencies don't have enough staff. So people are waiting mm -hmm. or private practice. They're at their capacity. So they're not accepting new clients. Mm -hmm. So it's like, yes, it's out there. But sometimes there's a, a bit of a hunt. And then you should always, I always tell people shop for a therapist. Mm -hmm. First time with a client, you might not like me and that's okay. I might not be what you need. And if you tell me that we can work together to figure out what you do need and maybe it's a new client, I mean a new um, therapist and that's okay. You know what I tell folks well, when it comes to shopping for therapy? Mm -hmm. Outside of my one guy, I have one guy who's currently reaching out to get therapy resources and I've sent him in the right direction but I didn't realize he was working with a budget and I'm very big on that that's I think that's one of the most important conversations to have mm -hmm. with people when it comes to getting therapy not just getting help getting help is exciting but I let folks know hey do you know what your internal budget is a month yeah because like you getting help and going broke to get help means I'm not helping you as a friend or an associate mm -hmm. And I, I don't want that. Yeah. Yeah. I want us to be able to take a shot to your success or a sandwich to your success <laughs> <laughs> after this is said and done. Yeah. And that's, you see that a lot with mm -hmm. people going towards private practice because, it, again, still they have to sustain mm -hmm. their lives. So, like, do you got 150 mm -hmm. once a week? Maybe more. Yeah. If you're not going through your insurance. And then, depending on your insurance, your copay. Might be mm. 75. Mm. Do you do you have that weekly? Mm. But some therapists with private practice do offer like a sliding scale. So like be open and honest. Like if you can only forward like $50 every two weeks, let them know. Explain what a sliding scale is. Off the top of my head, I don't yeah. know the definition, but... Um, yeah. But from what you've seen. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. From what I've seen is... Hey, I, I do need the help, mm -hmm. but this is all I have. Yeah. How does that work? Is it $50 every week, $50 mm -hmm. every two weeks? Mm -hmm. And it's up to the therapist that you're seeing to kind of be like, oh, yeah, I can do that. Or, you know, could we do maybe 75 every two weeks? Like, so figuring that out mm -hmm. because most times a session can range you from 150 to 200 every week mm -hmm. if you're going weekly so but if you know you need the services and it's not through your insurance 
just be honest about what you can and can't afford. And they might even, their services, Mm -hmm. at least in Maryland, I know that they do like pro bono. Yeah. I just don't know how often that is. Or it's like a limited amount. Yeah. Yeah. Or even through your, a lot of jobs, employers now are offering the EAP, Mm -hmm. Employee Assistance Program. Yeah. And that's usually like five or six sessions. And then, you know, if it's, I guess like a crisis that we can or that you can like kind of get through in those five or six sessions that might be more helpful than going without something as a social worker how would you define a crisis Um, anything that stops you from functionally normal Mm -hmm. on a normal basis like you just can't like you're stuck Mm -hmm. you're stuck in a rut or you're stuck in a hole or the speed bumps just like fuck your shit up a little bit too bumpy (laughs) yeah a little bit too bumpy yeah and you're just like oh i need to like smooth this out and i need to like be able to climb and see like the light Mm -hmm. just a little bit and maybe a crisis i mean a crisis is usually like short term anything long term you should probably like actively see help in some way whether it's if it's not therapy like finding um like a support group so therapy therapy if not that, a support group. I would group. say a support group mm-hmm. or for people that like do go to church, like see what your church may offer. Mm-hmm. And the community. Community. Yeah, mm-hmm. making... And what those resources are. Yeah. Yeah. And the reason I ask that is I think, unfortunately, with everything being clickbait, we don't evaluate a crisis correctly. Mm-hmm. Like for us, it's a crisis, that nigga died. And it's like, that's not always a crisis. Yeah. The crisis is usually what led up to the things and what could we have done as a community or as friends to help those people out before the crisis became an emergency. So most people hear the word crisis and they think emergency. And it's like, no, an emergency is when 911 seems to be the only answer for what's going on. Mm. So crisis is. Right now, we're in a downturn economy wise, technically a recession. There's a lot, there's a lot less food in the fridge, Mm -hmm. right? Like, uh, this young man, uh, Monty got me hit to this dude on TikTok who he was shopping for groceries at Walmart, it was like 21 items, and the 21 items in 2022. Oh, I saw that, and he was like, and then he did it again, and it was like 478. And I was like, oh, oh, that's why when folks like you say, fam, I can't get that hoodie. I got to save up. I'm like, girl, I don't blame you because folks like me, when I was doing what I was doing on the clothing side, Mm -hmm. we depended on people to have free flowing money Mm -hmm. to make sales. And when that's gone, it's like, oh, no, I understand. You you ain't you ain't got to tell me (laughs) nothing. (laughs) Just let a brother know. That's all I ask. Yeah. But that's that's a crisis. Mm -hmm. Like where I live right now, this Three bedroom, two bathroom, twenty six hundred dollars steal. You see how tall the ceilings are. We ain't know he's gonna get this, but it was like a mm. lot of hustle, bustle, putting money together, saving yeah. money, and then qualifying and also saying, Hey, we're not our hard limit is three, mm-hmm. but I need this space because I do all this work. Yeah. So I'm obviously I'm not in a crisis, mm-hmm. but for somebody else, they'd be like, How did you do that yeah. in DC for that mm-hmm. much? Mm-hmm. And it's like it's I'm, like shopping for a car. Yeah. And even that today, mm-hmm. right now, it's, it's risky with all the stolen cars and everything else, and yeah. people letting go from insurances and mm-hmm. insurances charging people ridiculous fifty amount. for like Kias and all these other cars, yeah. and then all these. I don't know if you heard about the um, situation that happened where people's insurances are going up because their information was being sold by particular car companies and the insurance companies were buying that data in order to raise people's insurance like the next month. So oh, if you wow. were if you were paying like, let's say, 120 or 78 for insurance, mm. all of a sudden you get a bill and your insurance is just 500 a month. And there's no explanation unless you hit them I would up. get rid of my car. Girl, I'd, I'd get rid of that company I got the car from, too. Mm. But it's none of my business. Oh. So, yeah. <laughs> I know I know this is like a large oh um, my gosh. topic no, but it's that. like no nah, yeah. that's a crisis mm-hmm. when you when the world starts working against you and these things start building up yeah it's very much hey how do I take care of these things or 
is it me, Jesus? Because you do start mm -hmm. feeling, wait, what am I responsible for yeah, in like, all of this? What did I like? What did I do? Mm -hmm. when, when did it get this bad? Yeah. And I think, I know me personally, last year around mm -hmm. this time, everything was going smooth, mm -hmm. and then it got tighter and tighter financially. And I was like, what is going on? Molly Wap. And I was just like, am I doing something? And mm -hmm. I was going through, I was like, no, nope, same bills. Mm -hmm. Just kidding. I even like- Same switched, habit too. Yeah, I even yeah. like switched my car insurance mm -hmm. and my homeowner's insurance. So it was just like, it was just getting too much. And I did that mm -hmm. and I had like, I could breathe for a month, mm -hmm. but it's, it was getting tighter and tighter. And I was like, what am I doing wrong? And I realized, oh, it's not me. <laughs> It's the, it's the world. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh, okay. Yeah. And unfortunately, that's why you're supposed to pay attention, even though it's very hard to look at right now. Yeah. And it was like, I was coming off of a high because mm -hmm. it was high success wise or high just how life is feeling. Just how life was feeling. Mm -hmm. um, to backtrack a bit, my dad passed away the end of 2020. My condolences. 22. Jeez. It's been a year, a year and a half. So it was like, I, I, I joke about it. Mm -hmm. He passed on my mom's birthday. I was like, <gasps> out with a bang one more time. <laughs> oh, she hated it. And I was just like, I'm, I'm making jokes right now because I just don't understand. What do you mean my dad just passed away? Mm -hmm. So it was like, I was slowly like, yeah, I was working through that. My birthday came, so this was... What month's your birthday? June. Okay. Yeah, so it was like so June. So it's recent. Yeah, Happy well, this was... The birthday. The, oh, yes, thank you. Yeah, no, no problem. Yeah, so um, this was last June. We mm -hmm. went to Atlanta for my birthday because I was supposed to go before the pandemic. Had mm -hmm. everything planned. Mm -hmm. Pandemic hit. Mm -hmm. Got the refund. I was just like, here you guys go. Here's your money back. <laughs> um, so I was just like, okay, going to Atlanta. Mm-hmm. I have to see Beyonce for free. Mm. Exactly. So I'm like coming. I was just like, oh, life's going well. And then my money's getting tight. And I was like, what's going mm. on? And I was just like, how? I was if just, I'm winning, why am I losing? Yeah. yeah. I was just like, oh, okay. I finally got to do the birthday trip I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Got to see Beyonce for free. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a major win. Yeah. You got to tell me about and that. Then, oh, how that happened. Great. I was like, oh, okay. Yes. Beyonce. But yes. Got to see Beyonce for free. And mm -hmm. then. Oh, just the tightness. Tight. You felt the walls getting like, closer. What is going on? I was just like, what was that like for you? Like, like, where did you, where did you start to see like, nah, this isn't adding up. Was it groceries? Groceries, groceries, and mm -hmm. I, I don't want to say gas, but I was, I was same habits. Sometimes, you know, human creature of routine, so I'm mm -hmm. doing the same things. And I'm like, damn, where my money going? Yeah. Why? Why? Is, like, and I need to, I need to change. Yeah, so, I was so like, like the mortgage still should still be the same, yeah, right? Yeah, mortgage was the same. So nothing I've, that hasn't changed at least. No, but it was like the uh -huh. little stuff, like so groceries, mm -hmm. gas, eating out. Mm -hmm. Just you, you got to eat out. You got to. I need my little. Yeah, I need, you, you need, I need to. my kava. Cold uh, stones. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, ice cream. Oh. I just yeah, but like yeah. you need the little treat yourself, and yeah. I realize. The treating myself was becoming too much. And I was just like, but this was fine a couple months ago. Not the treats. I was just like, oh, maybe, maybe I just need to change where I'm shopping at. Mm. And I did that too. But? And it still wasn't working out. And okay. I was, I was like, okay. Okay. I don't like this story, but this story is very real. Yeah. And I, I think it was mm -hmm. Around Thanksgiving, Christmas, yes, because it was, December had made it a year that my dad passed away. Okay. And so your mom's a Sag? Yes. Okay. My dad's Sag. Seventeenth. Oh, yes. Okay, my mom's the second. Oh. Yeah. And yeah. I was just like, okay. Yeah. So how 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 are women Sages? She uh. she is her. She is oh, her. Oh, okay. <laughs> she is her. It's, I love her. It's given I like it, I love it. Yeah. No, you like it, I love it. Yeah. 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 She is her. I love her. She, mm -hmm. she, she will always be there for me. Will okay. she get on my nerves? Okay. Yes. But, but, she, will. but she, she gets the important parts done. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was around the holiday time and it was like, okay, mm -hmm. I didn't get to do Christmas the year before because I just did not have the energy to do it. 
So this year I was doing it and I was buying groceries for Christmas to, to cook. Mm. And I was just like, where is my money? Oh, oh, I know that hit harder in the holiday it, time. <laughs> yeah. And I usually I always want to like buy my friends like a gift. And I was just like, y'all want to do Secret Santa? Mm. Just one gift? <laughs> just one, just gift. one <laughs> gift? Just one gift I have to buy. And I was like, okay. You didn't realize you was pulling on a whole leg with that one gift. Uh, oh, we even set a budget. It was mm -hmm. just like, no more. I think it was between 25 and $50. But even with the budget? I was still like, what is going on? Yeah. Because I'm an only child, so I'm spoiled. I like to spoil <laughs> myself. <laughs> and before, it's like, oh, I buy somebody a gift. I buy myself a little gift. Buy somebody else a gift. Buy mm -hmm. myself a gift. And I couldn't do it. And I was just like, oh, this is not what I signed up for. Mm. Or at least... I didn't realize I was signing up for it. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, oh, okay. I think by then I had stopped doing therapy too, mm -hmm. myself. Because the therapy like, got put on the back burner. Yeah. Like, you know how like fitness things get put on the back burner? Oh, Jim, now I could get rid of well, that. We'll come back to that. It was a very mm -hmm. smooth transition. The um, You said that like therapy knew us up. Therapy <laughs> knew I was going to be out. <laughs> therapy knew I was going to be out. But it was so much happening. Mm -hmm. Also around this time, my job changed insurance. Mm -hmm. And where I was going, where I was receiving therapy, they didn't take that insurance. So now I was paying out of pocket. Mm. And then towards the end of my pockets, mm. they were like, oh, we're going to close down our private practice. And the CEO wanted to do something bigger and do more like corporate healing and support instead of a private practice. So, so they're trying to get to the bag? I have no idea. Was that never explained? It was not. It was just she mm -hmm. expressed. She, I mean, she put in an email was like she essentially kind of stated she never wanted to open up our, her own private practice or she changed her mind. And that's OK. It's okay to change your mind. You're really good at reading between the lines. That's what this is giving. <laughs> <laughs> this is giving, you wrote the email really well, but let me tell you what I really heard. Yeah, I was just like, okay, like you never wanted to do this. That's okay. Mm -hmm. So it was essentially ending around the time I couldn't afford it. And I was just like, okay. And I never had like the termination session with my previous therapist. It was just like, mm -hmm. I couldn't afford it. Y'all aren't doing it anyways. Mm -hmm. But then I found her. Okay. So now okay. we're back. And okay. I was like, hey girl, I missed you. Okay. <laughs> I missed, I you, missed so you. much. <laughs> oh gosh. Oh no, I like, I found mm -hmm. her just to make sure to see if she was actually doing private practice or if she had gone to another agency. Mm -hmm. And I was just looking her up and I was just like, I'm she still doing private practice? Yeah, she opened up her own. I was just okay. like, I'm sending that email one day mm -hmm. and I sent it. And then I didn't hear anything back. You mind if I ask what that email said? Was it a hey girl or was it a, was like, was it a hey? <laughs> hey. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't a hey. The phone call when I did answer, it was a yeah. hey. Tears, oh. was, but yeah, I was just like, Hey, I was just reaching out to see if you were taking new clients. Mm -hmm. Um, this is my phone number and my email address. Please get back to me as soon as you can. Thank mm -hmm. you. Bye. I'm glad you found her again. I am too. Yeah. The, the way you just closed your eyes and said that, let me know everything. Yeah, it and uh, the day she called me, so I, I went back and mm -hmm. I recently saw that she had called me another time, but nobody answers unknown numbers nowadays. <laughs> My phone be like, hey, man, this is probably a scam. I'd be like, you gonna say less. <laughs> yeah. Spectrum call. And I was then, like, I don't know what company that is. And then they leave voicemails, too. Yeah, it's weird. Which makes me think, like, oh, yeah. it's important. And it's never nah, important. It's, it's just a really good scam. Mm hmm Yeah. So I saw that she, she did call mm -hmm. another time. And I just didn't answer it. <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> That, you know that's hilarious, right? <laughs> yes, but the day she called and I answered, mm -hmm. again, I'm seeing the number I don't know, so I, yeah. like, clicked the volume, but my phone did some weird shit, and so it vibrated, and mm -hmm. the screen lit back up, and I was just like, oh, maybe it's important, and I heard her voice, oh. and I was like, hey, <laughs> I've been waiting for this call. <laughs> I've been waiting for this call. You don't understand. And she's just I like, oh, you. when do you have time? Right now? No. Oh. No, I was Ooh. like, cool, because I don't have time right now. Okay. Because now I have to collect myself because mm -hmm. even though it was just like a, hey, I got your email, 
let's schedule something, I felt a weight off of my shoulders. Mm -hmm. And that felt really good. And I just felt, she knows I don't like to cry. And mm -hmm. I was just like, oh, I can cry. Are you, a, are you a strong black woman that doesn't like to cry? Or just being the only child and maybe having to lift so many hats, you're like, could we not cry today? Could we do that tomorrow? Because mm. I don't like to cry either. I. It's funny, we were talking about it today in my own session. I don't like to be vulnerable with my feelings and communicating mm -hmm. what I'm feeling. Okay. So, in turn, that turns into me crying. Because mm. you're like, damn, I got to do the thing. I yeah, I got to do the do thing I don't want to do. That's and then you. it's going to bring up emotions that I don't want to feel. Yeah. And Tears. you know, once you, once you bring them up after the session, them emotions now sitting on the couch with you, mm -hmm. like little kids that's super loud, like, hey, what are we going to do <laughs> now? Do <laughs> and I was like, we're going to have a good day because, like, yeah. I felt my feelings, but, mm -hmm. like, did I have to? And the answer is always yes. Mm -hmm. You always have to feel them. It's always about what you do yeah. with them. Mm -hmm. But you need to feel them. I don't like to feel them. Not all sometimes. the times. Not all sometimes. Time. Sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Or at least acknowledge them. You just can't like mm -hmm. push them in a corner after they don't exist. Like mm -hmm. one day you have to like touch it. You push them in the corner and them things grow mm -hmm. big. Mm -hmm. Very athletic. <laughs> You know, little show before, feed me, Seymour. You keep feeding me these emotions that you don't want to touch, and then I'm going to bite you back. That's my middle name. Hmm? That's my middle name. Seymour? Yeah. Fun fact. Really? Yeah. yeah it's, very, it's a very Jamaican name. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I love how when I say it's Jamaican, it goes from funny to actually yes. That yeah. is a very Jamaican name. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh... Sydney, the one with the lots, my mm -hmm. best friend. Yeah, she's Jamaican. So mm -hmm. like when I go, I've gone to her family reunion and I've met a lot of her family. I'm just like, these names. And she's like, <laughs> Jamaican. And I was just like, Very okay. uniform, very uniform names. Yeah, I was like, okay, <laughs> that makes sense. Like names you don't really hear. Mm -hmm. It's like Caribbean mm -hmm. or you're just old and black. My college degrees behind that light and you see my initial is s and everything or they'll oh, be behind it like, okay. yeah yeah right uh -huh. behind it i've had that degree since 2012 mm -hmm. and i was like one day i'm gonna hang my degree on a wall because i've seen so many people put it I on want the to wall do that with mine, but i give them to my mom my mom nah. has my degrees and my um my first license it i actually got it um a paper license and they gave me two and she put, she like framed one and she gave me the other this one. This is going to sound rude. My mom don't deserve it. Oh, my mom was there for me. So I'll just No, like, no, no. My mom was there for everything. Uh -huh. My mom, my degree is in my original degree. Mm -hmm. When I got my degree, my mom made 10 copies of my degree. <laughs> And she gave me a copy of my degree. Oh, she, she gave you she a has, copy. She has my original degree somewhere. Like all. Mom. She's this not is, a, she's I work not a for hoarder. This. She's very proud. And we got to protect this because this oh. is the only proof you have that you accomplished the thing. And it's like, girl, they can make a phone call. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, hey, I need. I yeah. have a big thumbprint online when people want to search <laughs> me. It's really fine. But. Her thing is, like, I have a childhood photo that I think, I was like, yo, this is one of the most adorable photos ever. I want that photo to put on, on the wall of things for when she we're doing the work. She went out and made a copy for you. She, made, she sent me a photo of it, and <laughs> I, I, I cursed my dad out because I don't curse her out. And I said, hey, man, what the fuck are we doing here? He's like, what do you mean? I said, hey, if I want something that's a part of my childhood, mm -hmm. either you guys give it to me. Or I'm going to start raising hell and nobody wants to see that. Because, oh, like, I, I don't have only child syndrome. I had, like, a lot of kids in and out of my life growing mm -hmm. up. Like, my mom took care of a lot of people. A lot of people slept at my house. There were a lot of folks at school who, like, needed help financially or a roof yeah. who would, like, stay at the crib for, like, six months or, like, a whole four semesters. Mm -hmm. So, like, I'm not one that's averse to sharing my space with others, but it's, like... If none of my accomplishments are mine or they're only mine when you guys decide I can have them, oh, yeah, that's then I'm going to have to start being aggressive and taking things. That's why for me, it's like she was a phenomenal mom. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But like, don't let people 
out celebrate the thing that you finally got. Mm -hmm. Like, well, you, you don't even get to see it. You get, I got a copy of my own joint. Think about that. I have a copy, a copy. of my degree. No, I, and it's real too. She like went to the Costco. They did the whole printout. This was like before they like found out about folks doing like fake degrees and everything. And I was like, Mom, you can't do it. And she was like, I could do whatever the hell I want. <laughs> and I was like, Yo, you know what? I like that attitude. I'll take that. Yeah, but yeah. I want my original. I think my mom has. My mom's the youngest mm -hmm. of well, because. She's the youngest girl, mm -hmm. but both of my grandmothers on both sides, which is why, tangent, I thought my parents were like meant to be. My mom's the youngest, <laughs> the youngest girl. The little, my the dad's little, the, the youngest. little shoulder shake that well, you just did. Was just, no, was just, in my head, it was like my mom's the youngest girl on her um, side of seven. Mm -hmm. My dad's the youngest boy on his side of seven. Oh. And they had me and I'm just like, oh, it's meant to be. Oh. Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> but my mom is always, has mm -hmm. always been the the photographer she's never in pictures mm -hmm. she's she's the first one to bust out her camera mm -hmm. every holiday every event she's never in any of these pictures she's really gonna disappear when she wants to mm -hmm. yeah no, I, I, oh i'm a helicopter child where you at why are you not at home let me check oh, your location no, what are you doing no yes my mom my mom well she also lives alone so like i do it for like wanted to reasons. be a helicopter parent but i told her like <laughs> But now for my mom, though, I understand that there was a sister who was supposed to be born before me that didn't make it. Mm. So I'm technically number two, but raised as number one in that okay. household. I'm like yeah. the second, but like the only child. You a C-section too? No. I'm yeah, baby, I'm, a, but... I'm, a, I'm a big C, C-section oh. baby, yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised I wasn't. I was almost 10 pounds, and I was just like, you had me naturally? Girl, was, where yeah. the 10 pounds is at? What? I was a butterball. I was a butterball. I was long and fat, and mm -hmm. I was just like, I was, so I was rainbow baby. Mm -hmm. um, What's a rainbow baby? So my mom's, um, usually the, the child before um, had a miscarriage or a stillborn. So that's what I am? I'm a rainbow baby? Yeah, that's what it's, it's called? Mm -hmm. Okay. There's supposed to be gold at the end of that rainbow. That's you. You got the end of the rainbow. That was a fun experience. I don't know if I'd call myself gold for her. <laughs> she just worked so hard. I just remember watching my mom clean a lot of houses. Like, mm -hmm. to this day, my mom still cleans houses on the weekend. Like, she just never stops working. I'd just oh, be God. like, girl... Why? Stop. And she'd be like, if I don't, who will? And I'm like, yo, what movie did you hear that line from? And why are you so passionate when you say it to me? I know who you are. You, mm. you good. Yeah. She said, no, no, the future. <laughs> okay. That's it, Miss Jones. You you okay. got it. You got the juice. <laughs> that was a nice tangent. How do we get here? Can't tell you. Can't tell you. Because I was thinking, I was just like, what was said? I was just like... I remember <clears throat> things being tighter financially, and then we're, we ended up here. Well, I mean, I'm glad you shared your therapy experience, because we were talking about you getting your therapist back. You got that old thing oh, back. Oh, yes. And Man, she hit you up with a call, and you ain't want to answer, because you weren't ready. I didn't know it was her, <laughs> but when I did, I was like, oh, this is this is great. This is what I needed. Yeah. That weight was immediately lifted off, because it's like, even though I have my friends and my partner, mm -hmm. You still just want like somebody from the outside looking at third party. Yeah. Third party that's not involved. Mm -hmm. Um being a social worker, how important is it to have a therapist? Oh, you need it. You just then you see so much every day. I mean, Give me I think examples. that's just like example. Mm hmm um, Let's go with heavy and then let's go with light. Something heavy. Mm-hmm. Like stub your toe heavy. Stub your toe heavy? Yeah. A mom finding out that her daughter was being abused underneath her nose. Mm. And you just getting the phone call of like, I don't know what to do. I just found this out. Wait, 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 before you go on any further, I need to let you know. I got to report this. Yeah. Yeah. And they're like, oh, and I'm just like, yeah. It's too late now. It's too late now. Yeah. I already know. And, you know, it was one of you know you're probably going to bring it up in a therapy session but you just found this out and you panicked and now here we are and i'm just letting you know the logistics of my but you job. made the right decision in panicking because mm -hmm. there's something to be said if that would have happened and she would have stayed quiet and the abuse would have continued yeah it was just like okay yeah okay so that's stub your toe mm -hmm. okay so 
let's say a paper cut, like just a light paper cut yes. for this example, yes. On the... <laughs> I'm trying to think. <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. Is that your phone or my phone? That was my phone. Okay. Um, Is that the helicopter? No. You can hear the choppers in the back. No. <laughs> <laughs> On the light side of that, mm -hmm. I guess somebody, like, everyone's emergencies are different. That's why I want to hear it. Because, so, like... What you consider an emergency isn't what I consider an emergency. Yeah, so trying yeah. to, like, I don't try to, like, classify, like, my client's needs or, mm -hmm. like, you know, yes, your your door to being abused and you finding out is very big. But to somebody else, it could be, oh, my food stamps got stolen. That whole thing where, like, people would get their, like, Food you know, stamps, like, oh, I'm supposed to get them today, and here I am. Though, getting Where stolen are they at? Can make that person transform into something outside of who they thought they were. Yeah, because yeah. you you don't like some for. I have a client that was the only income she was getting, mm -hmm. and she had four kids, mm -hmm. and the day that dropped, mm -hmm. she had a plan to go mm. to all the grocery stores she needed to, to mm -hmm. stock up for the month. And then she would get extra stuff because um, she was a Baltimore client, so. So you travel a lot. Well, I mean, I used to travel. Health, though. Yeah, okay. um, she was telehealth. Um, before telehealth, I was traveling to Baltimore mm -hmm. once a week mm -hmm. and I would just be in the city driving around to different clients, but she was she outside. Yeah, she had a few alignments mm. during that year. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, but she would also like sell stuff to the neighborhood because mm -hmm. that was also something like mm -hmm. generating money. But this was before they were still in food stamps, but like mm -hmm. that was all she had for the month. So how were folks still in food stamps? Were they just robbing folks for their car? I or? genuinely think uh -huh. it was an inside job. Uh -huh. I, that is my thoughts. I don't know, but... Uh -oh. When it came out and I guess so many people started to complain, it was like, oh, say they dropped at 1201 by 1202, they were like out of the system. Like it looked like you had spent it or transferred it. But how do you do that with food stamps? Mm -hmm. My opinion. It Your was professional inside, opinion. Yes, it was an inside job and it still yeah. happens to this day. But now food stamps are less of a focus, so less people care. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, oh, okay, you now people are like, oh, am I going to get everything I need this month? Or mm -hmm. am I going to have to figure out something else? No me gusta. No. Okay. Yeah. So, you about to say something else? I was going to say adult, but um, because, you know, some people also have like cash assistance too. That would be mm -hmm. gone. Yeah. So, this is people's livelihood. So, it's like, okay, just gone. A lot of folks have approached me about being a social worker and not tell them I don't have the heart for that kind of job. I don't think I have the capacity to stay still after hearing about particular things. Mm -hmm. And the job staying, the focus is just the job. Because yeah. it's like, I think in your line of work, I mean, in a lot of people's line of work, but like having to report something, what if you report something and it's just it gets reported, and the cops come. Anywhere? People talk about it. Cops leave. Mm -hmm. Everyone's now sitting in silence. An old boy or old girl who's caught up in the situation in terms of being the abuser is like, well, I'm just going to go back to doing what I was doing anyway. And it's like, mm -hmm. well, what happens next when people are stuck with the issue? Uh, sometimes that happens. The the case, the, the client I told you about made the report. Mom did everything she needed to do, went to the doctors, followed up, and they closed it. That's not a, that's not a case closed, though. It's not. It's not. And the reason I bring this up is because I really... Believing in the system is very hard as much as I tell people to get therapy and get help. I'm very realistic. Yeah. That's why when folks hit me up, a lot of folks hit me up, my DMs be crazy sometimes. <laughs> um... 
when they ask, hey, they want to go get therapy or help, I usually ask, what's going on? Mm -hmm. Because as a friend, I could say, hey, this is what you got to do or this is what you got to be careful of. Mm -hmm. And then as an advocate, I could say, all right, well, what are you doing for yourself in the meantime now that I've given you advice? Because I have, like, really great people who I love and believe in that aren't so great to themselves. Like... Mm -hmm. Some folks who are like extremely they'll just show struggling up for everybody. with, huh? I said they'll show up for everybody, but not themselves. But yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Or, 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 just hear me out. Mm-hmm. Like extreme suicidal ideation, mm-hmm. and then when I tell you to get help or go to get therapy, it's what was me is rude. What was me makes it seem like I'm looking down on the situation. But if you, as a friend, you tell a friend to go get help. Or do these things for themselves and every time they have an ideation bout they don't go get help or do the things for themselves and when you see them the conversation is i'm going through hell it's like you know at a certain point hell does become a choice Mm -hmm. if you're not getting the help that you need and i have all these resources right here And you're always putting things that are happening in life in front of the help. It's like, oh, life is hard and it's screwing me. I said, yeah, it is. That's that's what it does. It's really good. You have the resources to mm-hmm. do. Ha, ha, ha. Helicopter calling me. <laughs> no, see? See? Like, oh, what's up? Yo, yo. Just... That's so cute. I love her. Yeah. My ass though, please. What are you doing? Well, she can't have my location because I still go to see like clients in their home. Mm-hmm. So, you know, confidentiality. But mm-hmm. I have hers. <laughs> <laughs> I have hers. It's just dad. It's just pure dad. <laughs> Oh, gosh. But yeah, like, when people have the resources, you mm-hmm. can't force them to take them. You can lead a horse to water, but, like, if he's really thirsty, he'll drink. And if not, I you, you don't want to be rude and say, well, like, starve. But at some point, I have to maintain myself. My sanity. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah, mm-hmm. and, and I've said it to them yeah. countless times. I still believe in them, but now don't get me wrong. I talked to my guy about it, who mutual friend of ours, and mm-hmm. he was like, you know, have you told him to get help? I said, yeah, I told him to get help when he was in the car with us. Mm-hmm. He's like, well, what did he do? I said, he didn't get help. What is he doing? I was like, God knows, but it's none of our business yeah. because when we made it our business, the status quo was maintained. And I was like, I don't want to wake up feeling guilty because my boy ain't trying to put himself on. Mm -hmm. He's still here, though. Thank God. But it's just like, you know, things are falling the way that they're going to fall, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you just love people from a distance, whatever that may look like. What do you do in situations, not like what I described, but Mm -hmm. what you described, when the cases are closed and the problem still persists? Is there ever another point of solution for something like that or um because you're still the case manager for that right well so not the case manager i'm the therapist i i went to school for social work Uh and the reason why i essentially chose is because i can work in so many different settings and populations i just so are you a social worker or a therapist i'm a therapist but my degrees mm-hmm. in social work okay cool. yeah so because i was like i could have sworn you was a therapist but if you're a I social am. worker i mean they're the, both they're both yeah, the same of, thing mm-hmm. could be accomplished but mm-hmm. a therapist is hey you call me and we chat social yeah. work is hey i'm calling you about various resources in your life that you may be lacking and mm-hmm. how can i help you get more of those resources yeah so i'm not in yeah. the case manager mm-hmm. or case management like setting but i could do that i just knew I didn't want to do that. Did I explain I, your job correctly? Do you feel that was like solid in terms yeah. of therapist versus a yeah, social versus, worker? Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah, cool, cool. so that's why I chose social work because it is so diverse. It's mm-hmm. not um, like some people go into psychology or counseling and they know that's just specifically what they want to do. Mm-hmm. But what if I decide one day like, I'm, I love being a therapist. What if I decide I just can't? do this anymore i don't have the capacity for it i could go somewhere else when you said that i heard that i don't have the capacity (laughs) (laughs) i just saw the podium and everything (laughs) 
what if I don't have the like capacity to like be a therapist? I can't show up for my clients anymore. I could mm-hmm. go to another setting. I could work with another, you know, population of people, mm-hmm. and it there's no barrier to it. So that's why I chose social. So work. there's more flexibility and availability to move around. Yes. Right. Now, with that being said, though, as a therapist, Mm -hmm. the room's getting tighter for you and you guys are in demand as a job. Yeah. So it's like if I'm in a job that's in high demand, which means I could have as many clients as I want. But you don't want that. You you don't. don't That's what better help is. I don't like those. But, but I don't like those they're platforms. Not, but they're not paying enough people, <laughs> yeah. and the quality is trash. I was just talking to mm-hmm. my guy about it, Doctor B. He was the mm-hmm. therapist that I interviewed earlier today, and I was telling him I was like, you know, the horror stories that have come out of BetterHelp. The reason you've never seen me advertise BetterHelp as long as I've done this work is there were too many horror stories in 2019 and 2020. Yeah, and I get it. Right? That was. And that was the inception of the product. Yeah. And we in 2024, and it hasn't gotten better. I'm waiting better. for this documentary. It's yeah, that thing I'm, is that thing is gonna slap. But their advertisements are still strong on platforms like YouTube and everything mm-hmm. else. So not only is the documentary going to hit hard whenever it happens, I think another thing that's really important is the creators and the people that advertise this product that everybody knows is a bad product that other people who don't know it's a bad product to signing up for what's their responsibility in this mess because you guys claim to have teams that do research on these companies that you advertise mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. again like who's really held going to hit. accountable I know. and i think it's not all bad because mm-hmm. it it, it advertises yeah. therapy and people getting help. Yeah, and it right? depends on, you know, the therapist. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, like, I've had friends that have used it and they found great therapists. It's a cost thing. So Also, there's been stories of people who aren't real therapists working for better help. Yeah. It's, you, you get what I'm saying? I'm just saying, like, you know, what is this is giving Cardi B yelling, messy. what is the reason? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what this is. Yes. That's how I am. Every time I see a better help commercial, what I you just did eyes. is how uh, internally I am. And I'm just like, uh. yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's been helpful for some, not mm-hmm. all, or even like talk space where it's just like just texting. And if that's all that someone has mm-hmm. and they need to get it out and talk to a professional, okay, I get that. Mm-hmm. But that is not the end all be all your response just gave okay i guess because that's what it is i if that's all you can do right now Mm -hmm. if that's what you have access to i get it yeah i get it because it's like that there's better out there there it's better to have a option versus no option at all yeah but like this better help is (laughs) someone who says all right man i just want to play the devil's advocate and they play in it a little bit too well. And then you see that the things they joked around about, they actually doing. And it's like, fam, you said you was playing the devil's advocate, but you're yeah. doing the devil's work really well right it, now. It's, it gives me so much, like, mm-hmm. ick. Just the platforms, like, HIPAA compliant. What if, you know, like, I'm say, keep using <laughs> <laughs> say I'm licensed in Maryland and my client is somewhere else. Mm-hmm. And they have an emergency. Mm-hmm. How do I alert local mm-hmm. like authorities? And then local authorities gonna be like, "Well, that's not my district. I'm sorry, they connected you here." Yeah. Well, now I'm playing this up. like ticking time bomb yeah. of, okay, then it's my responsibility if something happens to that client because they were my client. I would never put myself in that situation. How many emergencies have you dealt with as a therapist? Over the years? Let's say the course of your career. Um, I would say about like once or twice a year, I do have to call like 911. Mm-hmm. I've taken a client to the hospital. They said something during session and I was just like, hmm? Huh? They're like, I know. I was just like, okay. You know that I know was... <laughs> And it's going to sound sad, 
<laughs> they were just glad that they said it in front of someone that finally cared. Yeah. Yeah. Is that and it? It, it? And it had been a while since they had an um, admission to the hospital too, and they were mm. just like, "Okay." And I was just like, "Yeah, it's fine." I was just. Mm -hmm. I think it's unfortunate that a lot of people are excited for the government because they're like, the government's progressive now. If you have a mental health issue, you can still have a job and have a mental health issue. And it's like... But can you function at your job right now? Like, is this a crisis for you? Well, not just that. There are jobs that are like, we'll keep that in mind for when we let you go a year from now Mm -hmm. because you have a mental health issue that we still found out as much as we're progressive outwardly. We're not that progressive internally no which is why our hr is still hring hr is still hr yeah i i get a little bit of the ick from from the um eaps because Mm -hmm. you guys know the eap is oh the employee employer Mm -hmm. assistant program when they offer the the therapy sessions Mm -hmm. they were still a level like Mm -hmm. i have to get to see your job i said that to Brian today mm-hmm. when we talked yeah. and I just I know it's a lot of references but I let him know he's like you know I'm so glad that you know companies are making space for these people mm-hmm. I think that's what he said but I replied and yeah but companies are now unfortunately using that as a reason to get rid of employees later down the road mm-hmm. so it's like a lot of corporations and companies that are offering these mental health discussions and these talks talks which i've led myself on a Mm -hmm. couple occasions i sometimes sit down and think to myself hey am i fucking the fellow man over yeah because it's like you know i want you to get help and just have a better perspective but i don't want your company to now have any ammunition when you have a bad day and they're like see just like the group session Mm -hmm. that we had and it's like no that's that's you're conflating things that's different yeah and i think in those situations you have to let the person know up front like there is limits to this confidentiality because there may be some reporting to your job what would be your advice for that to the therapist providing the services or to the person receiving the services let's start with the person receiving the service because that's mainly what this platform caters to Mm -hmm. and then let's give advice to the therapist that's giving the service Mm. You're you, killing it, I'm by upset. the way. I just want to let you know you're <laughs> killing it. I'm like, Why, I'm you. like, I'm like, this is the talk. I would say use it wisely, mm-hmm. but also like be an advocate for yourself. Like how we tell people, like, oh, when you go to the doctor to say, you know, to like complain about something, if they don't believe you, like ask questions, like mm-hmm. what does this look like at the end of the five sessions or six sessions? What if you say I need more? Mm -hmm. What does that look like? Because also a little bit of the ick, it it sometimes takes people years to like really open up. You want me to do it in five sessions? What does that look like? No. What does that look like? And then it's different if, you know, Someone's been like, they know they need the support. They've been seeking help and they finally get it. So they mm-hmm. might just word vomit it all out. Mm-hmm. So as the person providing the service, mm-hmm. hey, this is what it is. This is the limits to my confidentiality. Do you understand that? Mm-hmm. If you don't, how about we reschedule so you have time to think about it? You at least try yeah. to help where you can. Okay. Okay. Now this is where you give advice to the therapist. Mm -hmm. That's in this work that has the same concerns you have when it comes to the work that you're doing. It's... Because you're doing a phenomenal job. Thank you. It's a conflating thing. I So... Mm -hmm. Don't let me lose focus. (laughs) I'm going to go on a tangent. I... You could tangent. Yes. I got enough space on my SD card for the tangent. (laughs) But Mm -hmm. earlier this year, I just got my clinical license i just mm-hmm. studied i passed i had congratulations to take thank you you did One, what you had to do who oh, that first yeah. time mm. i almost said <laughs> not again mm-hmm. i missed by one mm-hmm. i almost said not again but i took it again in february mm-hmm. and i needed 103 and i got 104 so i was like in your face mm. 
So, but that was um, employee assistant programs. That was a topic because it kind of conflates with the the ethics, Mm -hmm. can't say the word, of you know, just social work and being a ther- um, a therapist. Because mm-hmm. we are... have to have these standards uh-huh. for our clients, for the okay. people we serve. And confidentiality is always a big one because if you never say it to the client and then they say something and now they're like, why are the police here? Well, you said this. Well, you didn't say it. And sometimes clients forget. But it's a very conflating thing because it's like, I'm here to serve you as mm-hmm. best as I possibly can but I also have a job to do. Mm-hmm. And I have to balance those things. Yes. Me at the front of Velvet every night. <laughs> yep. <laughs> like, you want people to have fun, but like, hey, mm-hmm. be safe. I want you to say you're functioning mm-hmm. at a 50. How can we get you to a 75? I'm telling you, get over here. Let's dance. But then you start doing dance. things that's not dancing. And that's Let's not... Dance. Yeah, just it gets risky after that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What does that look like, and how do I communicate that to the best of your understanding? Mm-hmm. And you might not understand it, but like I have the proof to say that we talked about this and we discussed this. So because I document mo- everything. Yes. So yeah. moving forward, mm-hmm. if something were to be said, please, please, God, no. Yeah, yeah, you can't come back to me like, why would you say that? Remember, we, we discussed this. Yeah. Like, you probably signed consent for it. Did you not read it? I explained it. Girl. I'm sorry you forgot. But Girl. I'm doing my best to do my job. <laughs> I'm serving you, but I got a job to do. I'm, trying, I'm really trying right now. Yeah, so it's, it's hard. Remember mm-hmm. your own, like, ethical standards. As a therapist. As a therapist. Yeah. And they may conflate with who you are mm-hmm. as a person, morality. It's always a balance. There, there's always going to be an ethical dilemma in practice. I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah. This conversation, I'm going to have to ask you to come back a couple of times just so we can talk like this. <laughs> you know what's so funny? I was just like, you don't like, ask me to come back. And I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to do it too. <laughs> it's because you're doing a great job. Like, like um, so platform wise, I think when when i look at the landscape of mental health i'm really good at complaining i love complaining if i have a complaint oh i have to play i hold on to a complaint right (laughs) i'm big on there's so much mental health being forced down people's mouths Mm -hmm. that i look at the landscape and i'm like there's a lack of understanding like reading the words is an understanding being in the situation and explaining what happened and why that leads to understanding. Yeah. So for folks like you, the reason I do so much, hey, what does that mean? Mm-hmm. Is for the average person to be like, oh, so that's what that meant? And that's what that does? Yeah. And that's what that led to? Terms. Yeah. My clients say, it's like, oh, I love talking to you. You feel like a big sister mm-hmm. or like my best friend. I'm like, that's great that you feel comfortable that we have this rapport. But remember, I'm not. I'm not. I'm still your therapist. But like, uh, you know, sometimes I have to be like, mm, I'm going to challenge you on that because what you mean, why, why is this the thought process? Yeah. And they're like, why would you do that? Because I'm your therapist. You I'm going to challenge you. I'm not sure. to do that. Yes. And I'm not sure. Yes, man. Yeah. I'm not here to agree with you. I had a yes, man conversation today, <laughs> too. What <would> be? <laughs> and I told him, I said, Drake is in the position he's in right now because he had too many yes, men around him. If he had more people that were willing to protect him and say, no, hey, that's stupid or don't do that, Mm -hmm. he wouldn't be in this position. Guess who else had too many yes men around him? Biden. A lot of time was wasted. Kamala Mm -hmm. could have been doing her thing, figuring things out, cackling her way, trying to figure out, hey, I got to do this. Mm -hmm. She raised a lot of money. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But it's like there's a lot of mistakes. I got the text message for that Zoom. Did you? Yeah. My boy sent it to me, too. I was like, what is this? You, too? I, don't, I didn't join it though. I'm sorry. I was like, I'll make a donation. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I got it. And I was like, what is this? It, mm-hmm. it was, that was Sunday. It was just a lot. Mm-hmm. It felt like. Um, Say it with your chest. <sighs> Say it with your chest. It's a lot. It, it was a lot. So when, and I'm a backtrack. So, As a community. <laughs> when 
So like four years ago when like mm-hmm. Kobe died in January or February. January. January. Oh, so January. the end it was the end of this January. This photo. Yes. Is to commemorate Kobe. Mm-hmm. Give me a uh, second. Let Kobe, me, I let see. Me move, let me move these this right here. Uh-huh. So that's the dude from Eat. Yes. Right? I, mm-hmm. And this was I think a day or two later, they went down to Chinatown to commemorate everyone shooting the Kobe shot. Yeah. I got a lot of moments on my wall. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. When, Don't ever get it twisted. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've, I've been looking. But when uh, Kobe died, I was doing a yoga, yoga teacher training. Mm-hmm. And I remember being in a class that I was like observing for my training. And when I walked out, the air felt heavy. And it was just like, what happened? Why, why, why is everybody like this? It was like, oh, Kobe died. It felt like a shift in the world. And so Sunday, I was in Pilates. And the studio was very open. And you hear people talking. I was just like, we are trying to finish this class out. I'm dying in this class. Mm-hmm. And I hear people, oh, he dropped, he dropped. And I was just like, oh, please let him be drunk. And it wasn't. And I was just like, oh, it didn't feel he- heavy. But the air was swirling. It's, there was like so many mixed emotions but i felt hopeful i just hope that we can keep this momentum going because i don't want a repeat of the last four years if that makes sense that makes sense Um, i was at brunch mm. that was the kobe passing away was the last brunch i went to really you haven't been to brunch since no that's it was it was it was a lot the um it's crazy the to say that was four years ago. But yeah. I was out with my guy getting brunch and it was us celebrating not seeing each other and like a brick. Mm. And the hostess came and she was super excited. She was like, Oh my god, did you hear Kobe died? And she was a young a young lady, black, and I wasn't I just wasn't ready to receive the news that way. So yeah. chipper. And I had an attitude. I ain't take it out on her but, but i was just like, like yo what do you mean why you so happy what's up with you yeah what's- <laughs> why 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 would you say that with a smile on your face and my homie manages it and it was like oh what's up with you i was like yo your host is wilding bro. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna come to my table and tell me with a smile on her face that yo and, and it was like i was like nah you you lying he looked at the TV, and the TV let us all know she was indeed not lying. It's that and then moment in time. There's two moments, though. Mm-hmm. There's Kobe. Are you going to say Whitney Houston? No, 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 no. You feel bad mm-hmm. and terrible because it's Kobe. Yeah. But then when you realize everyone else that's involved with the oh. crash, that was a much heavier layer. Mm-hmm. Because it's like... I think it's hard to deal with the loss of someone's future when oh, they're yes. younger. Yeah. And when that happened, I was like, oh, I, was, I, was, I went home and cried. I was like, I'm not doing this. Mm. I was like, no, no, no. I have no idea how we got here, but no, 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 no. no. T- I told you not to let me lose it. It was a great tangent. Okay. It got to a good place. Um, So what are you looking to do with the work? that you've been a part of from your storyboard to now because like like what's next for me no how do you go about giving yourself credit for everything that you do <laughs> i have to remind myself why you make that fake <laughs> Imposter syndrome. That, that face said, to, why did you hit so close to home? Imposter syndrome. Yeah. I have to remind myself mm-hmm. that I do good work. I think you're doing a beautiful job. Thank and that you. is that's not easy. Like, the things you're telling me, I wish I was the average person, like, who I was in, like, 2017, 2018. But I'm not. And because I've gotten so close with you guys when it comes to the work. While refusing to become you guys, <laughs> is because there needs to be a middle ground of understanding between the patient and the people treating the patient. Mm. There's not enough advocates who, well, you don't make a lot of money in advocacy. You can, but it's yeah. like the hoops you would have to jump through are kind of risky because you might mess around and be sponsored by better help, and we don't want that. You know what I'm saying? So, 
when I get to hear from a friend and hear her story and hear like the intricacies of how she got here, even though she didn't want to be on camera, <laughs> I get to enjoy the moments and say, wow, you've done a damn good job. Oh. Yeah, it's, uh, you're welcome. It's I know hard. it's Tuesday and it's supposed to be about tacos, but you've done an amazing job. No, I haven't done a taco Tuesday. Really? In a while. Uh, okay, I was going to say ever? No, 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 not ever. Oh, but just like, I was going to say, are you human? Are you while, really from the like, DMV? I tacos, I'm going to go get tacos whenever. Okay, I was going to say, that's kind of weird. No, I just haven't done one in a while. Okay, all right. You yeah. sound irresponsible. I sound irresponsible? Yeah, no taco on a two. How long is a while exactly? I'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I don't remember last time I had a taco. It had to be like last year. Oh, it's not bad. It's not, no, no, no. Yeah. It's not bad. I thought you was going to say like 2016. Oh, no. The just... sun was going down on the Capitol. No, I just. Tacos are phenomenal. No. Okay. I'm a little bougie. We like to go to <laughs> El Salvador, you know, Hyattsville. Never been. Hyattsville? Yeah, no, no, no. I, I've been, I've been in Oh, when I say El Salvador, yeah, I yeah, mean Iceville. Yeah, yeah. yeah, okay, that little all right, strip all right. of like Riverdale with all the taco spots. Okay, There's okay, one taco okay. Spot. I thought you named. I thought you meant the name of the spot. Was oh called. no, 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 no. Okay, cool, El Salvador, cool, cool. Hyattsville. Mm -hmm. That one spot, that one little strip of road with all the all the the taco places. You gotta explain why they call it El Salvador. The Sesson is there, but you got to explain. You got to, you got to explain. El Salvador you gotta, in you gotta, Maryland. You got to let folks know why. <laughs> the culture, there's Papi culture Sesson there. Papi is out there, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. But there's one place over there. They have lingua tacos and they are delicious. They have tahini? Tahini? Mm -hmm. The oh, pepper the style. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think so. It's been a while. It's been like a year. Okay. So, I'm just saying. I'm just, yeah. You know, you said they got it. You said they got it. Because not a lot of places do lingua tacos. And I like lingua. A lot of people don't. Is that cow tongue? Mm-hmm. Why do I know that? That's not a Jamaican thing. Why do I know that? I feel like I saw that on a menu one day, and I was like, I wonder if that's cow tongue. It is. Ah. I like it. Chewy. I grew up being chewy. Yes. Yeah, was... <clears throat> I don't got that in me. <laughs> First time I had one, I was like, oh, My grandmothers wild. were southern, mm -hmm. and they had Washingtonian kids. Okay, okay. And no, no, that's here fair. I am. That's fair. That's fair. I had chitlins and pig feet growing up. You gotta, you gotta, we gotta get back on track now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. How do you go about convincing yourself that you've done a great job? Because there's proof, but not everybody works like that. I don't think I'm in it for the proof, so like mm -hmm. reminders. What are you like, in it for then? Mrs. I gets down and jiggy and my therapist <laughs> loves me <laughs> and make a call and I got you say less. Uh, I mean, you go into hospitals with clients. Yeah. You right. feel what I'm saying? You sitting there through the hard times. Mm -hmm. You making the calls. You getting the care you need for yourself. Does that does therapy look like self care for you or is self care separate from therapy when it comes to you? It's both. Okay. Well, wow. it's to clear my mind when I've had a heavy day of work. Mm -hmm. Even though, like, yes, I could talk to my supervisor. It's just, I could focus on me. This is my my hour mm -hmm. where I can, no interruptions, just me. Yeah. So, yes, that is self-care. But then the reminder of I am a good therapist, coming from my therapist. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, sometimes clients are like, especially the little ones, the ones like the younger clients I have. Mm -hmm. Why can't I see you every day? Do you really mm -hmm. want to see me every day? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like talking to you. Mic drop. In my heart, every yeah, time. Yeah. And I'm just like, but that's okay. You'll see me next week. Mm -hmm. This is like, we'll have another good conversation. If we don't, that's fine too. Or then with the adults that there's a level of trust like oh i wouldn't do something without talking to you first about it and i was just like really it was just like you're the adult's adult which is crazy because sometimes in this world i i don't feel like i feel like now mm -hmm. at 32 i'm an adult adult mm -hmm. from 18 to like 25 maybe 26 i'm like pre-adult i mm -hmm. 
I'm figuring it out, but I don't have it together 26 to like now. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, okay. I think I got a hold on what this looks like. You got the right people around you, though. Yeah. That's nice. Mm. It's, it's nice to have other thoughts that aren't yours as you're figuring things out. Yeah. Yeah. I already know the title for this is going to be <laughs> I'm a therapist? <laughs> I, I am? Like, yeah, I am. Um, what's one piece of advice you would give to someone looking to be a part of the field that you've successfully incorporated yourself into? Don't do it because you want to be a superhero. Ooh, okay. All right. Okay, okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, you're not okay. going to save people because <sighs> you can't control people. So okay. don't do it thinking you're going to get the acknowledgement of a superhero. So, yes. Fun fact, mm -hmm. that was the first thing I learned to tell myself while doing this work in 2019. The first year I did this work You're of mental health outreach. People. Yeah, I was like, nah, you don't, you don't get to, because you know, you know why I do this work and how this started. It's been a while. Please remind me. When I lost Nisha in mm -hmm. 2018, the whole funeral and losing her to depression and anxiety. Mm. And I just remember learning about this platform pays homage to who she was and what I learned about mental health, but also it shed light on the bigger problem of no matter how close you get to the person going through the mental health emergency or the person who's struggling, mm -hmm. that doesn't make you qualified to help them. Mm -hmm. You actually have to have resources mm -hmm. and point them to the right people. And yeah. You can't always be the listener. Yeah, here. you don't get to be the end all be all, especially mm -hmm. when it's beyond just an episode because mm. like one one person who i'm friends with now that we've had a sit down with he had like a bipolar manic episode that lasted like a year and a half mm. and like it's scary to me when you find out how long these things can go for like some of these things are like marathons yeah. <laughs> like like wait so you had that episode from when yeah, man, up to the time I met you, we did the sit-downs. The two sit-downs and the third one? Yeah, yeah, now there too. Like, we was, we was shooting the shit. We was playing cards. We was joking around. We exchanged water and everything else. And it's like, now nah, you can laugh. You should laugh. Yeah. Now nah, that's real. Because it's just yeah. like, yeah, now when you in it, when, you, when you've seen as much as we've seen and you become aware of just how this mental health thing works, I think it's unfortunately that it's unfortunate that mental health is seen as this thing that is bad. And it's like, no, the word mental health is just a measure of your health. Mm -hmm. Where are you mentally? Are you good mentally? Are yeah. you bad mentally? How do we get you back to being good mentally? And where it's do... Like physical health. It's like, it's not bad, but mm -hmm. there's just this history. It's like, oh, mm -hmm. you're the crazy. Like, no, you're just a person that's trying to figure out how to function you just have to function a little bit differently give yourself credit mm -hmm. <laughs> it's really okay yeah but as a society society views mental health as this thing that's an emergency and that's true but it starts with the measurement of health not how do we put brand new band-aids on problems and say oh see it's fixed and it's like no you don't no. fix that yeah it's yeah it's, there's work that has to be done yeah. it's not a like oh i talked to somebody i'm i'm cured yeah. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I think the best example of it is falling off the bandwagon. Mm -hmm. Like when it comes to AA meetings, mm -hmm. like when you figure out you have something, you don't get to stop working on it. You're just yeah. now aware. And it's like, I right, now your work is when that moment happens, how do you handle the moment? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then after handling the moment, are you able to stomach yourself? Because not everybody's able to handle the moment. And yeah. not everyone has strong stomachs, which is okay. That's what pepto -Bismol and all that other <laughs> stuff is for. Mido and all the other things. Yeah. Drinking a little Olipop. Yeah. 
So that's that's what I think about when it comes to the work and what it is that we do. So when I get to talk to folks like you, where it's like, now nah, we we talking talking like that, <laughs> like this was talking talking. I'm like, see, mm-hmm. now you gotta get invited back. You don't even need to let the folks know who you are, government wise, because like, I know you're not trying to be on camera, but you're too knowledgeable and you you hold yourself well and you just you had a phenomenal conversation Thank how you. dare you do a great job <laughs> so so like, now oh. you forced my hand like you said it yourself see now he gotta invite me that's i can hear that this was a great was, combo yeah i was just like oh this isn't how i thought it was gonna go this feels nice yeah, so i'll come back it, it's a part of the plan i did have therapists and other folks who i said hey whether it's therapist or someone's experience, I was like, if I think that there's a deeper conversation to be had about certain parts, I'm going to hit folks up to be like, see, you got to come back because yeah. you've done too well. Or you have to come <laughs> back because we need to tell that story and that clarity to certain parts so people understand why that was handled the right way or the wrong way mm-hmm. so they don't get to make the mistakes that we've made. Yeah. And I get to learn from everyone's stories as I continue to help people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, so good job. Good Thank job. You. Yeah. No, no problem, no problem.